everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, my name is Deanne, and today I am so happy. I've got with me Mel Dor, the Aloha Shirt Psychic, and uh, I, I love those shirts. And then my friend, Dr. <laughs> Lena Rodriguez, Lena Down Under. She's from Australia, and she's coming really, really early in the morning. So she's like <laughs> yeah. 45 minutes, and she's got some places to be. So I've written down some questions that I'd like to talk about, and I'm going to see what everybody's thoughts are on them, and we'll get what we can, you know. So for all you people at home here in the States and in Canada, say hello to Down Under. Yay, hello. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> down Under, too. So that and we're going fun. into winter. Look at this. Oh, oh that's oh. right. You guys are going into your autumn now. Yeah. Oh, we're getting spring, my favorite time. I love spring. I'm seeing all the green coming on the trees. Makes me happy. <laughs> I so, told you to come to Australia six months out of the year because your uh, your summer is our winter, and then yes. yours is our summer, so we could just yeah. And I live in an upside down world. That's yeah. okay. Oh. Well, it's not as upside down as here, so <laughs> hey, well, that's true. I know. So was your eclipse the day before or the day after ours? We're before you by a day. By a day. Gosh. I know Americans struggle with this, not being yes. the first, <laughs> but no. We, we do. Well, I'll have to come we'll in talk, the winter. Talking in the future, we're talking to tomorrow. It's Thursday in Australia, correct? Yeah, exactly. It's my special oh. power. Oh, it is. It's magic. <laughs> talking to the future, you all. Literally. <laughs> well, I didn't know if you guys had heard. I was going to, um, well... I got just got news about this, so I'm gonna I'll go and tell you. This is just a statement first, but I didn't know if you guys had heard. But um, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, Trump Organization Chief Financial Officer Alan Weisselberg. Did you guys hear that he's just been sentenced to five months in jail for lying yeah. under oath? During yeah, the it should have been. It should have been five years. Yeah, totally. If we did five. that, we would be gone yeah. for a long time. <laughs> oh, I know it. I know. It. Well, the first topic I put down here. Okay, I'm going to read it to you and see what you guys think. Jack Smith, he just filed an emergency brief on Monday, urging them, uh, urging them to reject Trump's plea for absolute immunity based on the principle that no one is above the law. The case is due to be argued before ju the justices April 25th. He said, unless Trump's theory is rejected, we risk jeopardizing American standing as the guardians of democracy in the world and feeding um, the spread of authoritarianism, um, threatening the national security of the U.S. and the democracies around the world. This argument postponed Trump's trial, and, it, and he's trying to get it to help him to delay prosecutions while running um, to regain the presidency. So I was wondering, what do you guys think? Will Jack Smith get them to move up the absolute immunity claim? And uh, will they rule? Uh, Trump has absolute immunity. How do you think they're going to rule? And do you think he's going to get them? Well, this up? is the key issue, isn't it? It's three and a half years since the insurrection, and they haven't got a ruling on what is presidential immunity. I mean, that is disgusting. Is. It's unacceptable. It's toy town. It's held up every other case. You know, it's diabolical. But will they even do it now? Oh, let's have a look. Oh. I just can't see how they can, you know, even question it. How well, is that even questioned? Here's what I pick up, if you want to know. <laughs> um uh, Lena, can I do it while you're shuffling? Or yeah. Okay. So first of all, my guides have told me right from the get-go that the Supreme Court is not going to say that he's immune from prosecution. Mm. The other thing is when the case got delayed or whatever, because it's just Trump, it's just Trump BS, delay, delay, delay until after the election, because if he thinks he wins, he can pardon himself. That's not going to work. He'll try every legal trick in the book. We know that. That's okay. So the deal is um, when the Supreme Court said they would hear his immunity case in June, I was like, no, I kept seeing it a lot sooner than that. Mm -hmm. My feeling is Jack Smith will be able to get it into court. 
a lot sooner the Supreme Court. Now, Trump's lawyers will try shenanigans like they always do. The Supreme Court, I feel, will say he is not immune from prosecution because that's what I see psychically. Mm -hmm. The logical part of me says that if, if they said that he is uh, immune, which they won't, they'll say he's not immune. If they said that, then any president could get murder, rob a bank, break every law, and nothing could happen. Mm -hmm. So they're going to say that he's not immune. I do agree with Lena. It took way, way too long. It was legal wrangling bullshit. Pardon my language. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> and that's, yeah. That's, well, I get this is the karmic destiny of the United States. It, it all rests actually on this issue. Yes. Right? You're right. When you yes. boil down all the other stuff, can he or can't he? And it's not just has he immunity or not immunity, it's what are their parameters uh, to do it. I think they're, they're doing calculations behind the scenes, but I'm not confident they're going to come forward with a ruling. I think they're going to kick it down the road again because once they make the ruling, the game's up, right? Well, that's true. Once that's they true. come down, all the other cases go like dominoes. They don't want that to happen. Unfortunately, it is not the most unbiased court that America's ever had. Um, I, I think they're going to keep batting it back to states. They're going to mess about, oh, just push it back in this case, push it back in that case. I don't think they've got the strength of purpose and the morality to do it. Well, the thing is, though, if they I keep... love to be wrong. No, well, in a way, I hope you are. <laughs> totally. But but if they kick it back to the states, they can't. Like the the federal. Okay, so there's state crimes that the state prosecutes, and there's federal crimes uh, mm -hmm. across the country that the federal government prosecutes. Yes. But if they try to kick it back to the states, then but on the federal cases, like the the records case and all of that stuff, he's mm -hmm. he's also charged federally. And so I think the Supreme Court would probably deal with the federal case. Is he immune or not? It should, yes. Correct. It so should. But kicking it back to the states. Kicking I don't it know. back to the states or kicking it down the road. No, I see they are saying. under no obligation to return a judgment. And that is wrong. And that's where I think Merrick Garland has failed the nation, not because he's an evil man. He should have stood up to this, should have been sorted 12 weeks after January 6. An unprecedented scenario happened and an unprecedented response was required. Yeah. You know, Gary and, and I... Was, was, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that, that's it. Gary and I were in Springfield and we went to Lincoln's home and Lincoln's tomb. And, you know, I've never channeled Abraham Lincoln. I mean, but when I was... You did after Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. When I was standing at his sarcophagus in, inside of his tomb, his spirit came to me and it was pretty profound because I was saying, okay, you know, what's going to happen? I just asked that question telepathically and it came back tele telepathically. We have been showing you that our union will survive. Our democracy shall live on and justice shall and will be done. And then, and then I asked telepathically uh, if it was him that had, giving me, had been giving me the message that justice shall be done. And the answer came back, trust in spirit. That's oh. So it was really a profound message. Totally. Uh -huh. So, in the hush money case, his argument is about the hush money case is that, well, he didn't sign the check, even though Michael Cohen went to jail for this and it should be open and shut. He didn't sign the check until he was the president in the Oval Office. And he said, and then I had absolute immunity. Hold on. That's exactly what I was just getting at a moment ago. 
well, I didn't sign the check because I was president. So signing the check when he was president gave him the right to commit a crime. That's not going to hold up. The judge is going to overturn it. The state of New York will find him guilty. He cannot use presidential immunity regardless of what the Supreme Court says in the state of New York. And that's why they're continuing on with this trial mm. while the Supreme Court is sitting around with something up their rear end trying to figure it out. Okay. Mm. Well, he's when I read on it, he's going to be convicted in New York. Yeah, yeah. And when I when I read on about the absolute immunity, Mel, I got the same thing that he's he's they're not going to give him absolute they can't give him absolute immunity. Otherwise, surely they can. The problem is when. Right. I exactly. The and you know what? Is I agree with you. They've got to stop kicking it down the road. <laughs> it's very dangerous for the security of this country, and it's very dangerous for our democracy for them to fiddle while we're almost burning. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I think that's where Garland should have pulled up a few of them in the car park, like I'm old school. Um, and it's not as though they don't have, you know, talks behind the scenes and things. You know, so, no, no, this cannot go on past day decks. Make a plan. Sounds uh -huh. like struggle politics, Lena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and for entertainment purposes only, I just have to say time is very difficult to do, but I did use my pendulum mat just to see what yeah, I got. Yeah. I got about the 17th that they would take this up, that he is going to pressure them into it. So we're, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. So that's not yeah. too far away. But it's important. And this whole process is important with this Wheel of Fortune for Americans to... Um, actually realize if we're not going to lose this we have to fight for our democracy we have to understand the basics of it make mm -hmm. it happen yeah. but the wheel of fortune can also mean inertia like spinning wheels correct not getting forward momentum well there is that angle but i, I think it's more it's big picture stuff i've always thought this from the beginning it's easy to point fingers at Trump because he's so repulsive. <laughs> he is so bent. Uh, you know, he's so awful. But in a way, he shines a light on the underbelly of a lot of things that were already wrong. With Absolutely. The I agree 150% on that. He has a karmic role to play in this. Right. I agree. I agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. It um, doesn't doesn't make it right but it was no it's, it's hard to watch <laughs> but in the big picture yeah i agree i agree well the second topic i had for you guys oh. is uh trump's lawyers lied to the judge about not being able to secure the full yeah. fraud bond and he also did not attach his financial statement his lawyers yeah. told the court that it was a practical impossibility for him to find a company to put up the full 464 million. So mm -hmm. the judge lowered his bond. But mm -hmm. according to a new report, Trump lawyers were approached by a billionaire that was willing to put up the full amount, but they yeah. never told the court. If this is true, Trump could lose everything and his lawyers could too. This would have broken an ethics rule. And if true, the lawyers could not only be sanctioned, but disbarred for this action or even prosecuted. Also, yeah. the company that did loan him the money may not have been solvent enough to actually uh, cover it. And now there's a contract issue with the bond itself saying that they won't pay if Trump loses, which you cannot do. The judge scheduled the hearing about April 22nd, April 25th. Hold right on, hold on. Hold on. So, that, makes yeah. no, that makes no sense. If Trump loses, we're not going to pay the bond. Yeah, we're that's why bond. you're being hired, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? No, I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist. I do that one All out. of this is two weeks from now. Now, he had a deadline. Weeks ago, absolute deadline. Everyone was sort of, you know, mm, will he meet the, you know, midnight deadline? Well, of course he didn't. Oh, well, we'll give him another 10 days, which has come and gone. It's like, it's, I don't know. It's. I have to swear again, it's a shit show is what it is. It it's, absolutely. Just, it's horrible. <laughs> it, it's actually a test of the American justice system and it, it's, actually coming in with a bit of a D minus at this point. It really needs to step up its act. I think it'll get there in the end. 
I think you're being too kind with the D. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I didn't want to give it an F. <laughs> if like, you can give an F minus, that that would probably. Well, the, the whole thing that I jotted down, and I'm not a lawyer, but my guides tell me mm -hmm. that if the attorneys lied to, to the judge, that makes Trump responsible because they're his legal representative. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to say, oh, no, my attorneys did it. Yeah. Whatever. You know, the devil made me do it. Whatever. Yeah. I see his bond revoked. Furthermore, the person that was going to loan him the money, I'm still blown away. Well, if he loses, I'm not going to pay. I, no. oh, man. So yeah. he's going to shoot through, as we say in Australia. Hanky's going to disappear. Exactly. Because you remember he went on every channel that had a microphone and going, oh, I offered him the lot. He actually exposed all this. Exactly. <laughs> maybe, maybe that was his plan. If it did, it work. But the guy wasn't even licensed in the state of New York. And I think you have to be licensed in New York if you're going to post a bond. I forget how it works. But his company wasn't solvent enough. You know, he could only get a, I think he was only, it wasn't worth. 25 mil or something. Yeah, it wasn't worth four, 450 million or 475. So. No, but here we are sitting and waiting. And we'll just wait another few weeks till someone talks about it again. Well, do you guys think he, the judge is going to rule that Trump lied by omission? The finance and and also with the financial things. Um, did he leave that out on purpose because he didn't want? Of course want to he did. Of course he did. Too. Because he was going around saying how much money he had and he didn't have it. He yeah. left it out on purpose because also he knew this company wasn't solvent enough to be able to do it. Okay, the judge is going to rule that Trump lied. Trump will appeal it. It'll be overturned on appeal, and that appeal will be expedited. They're going to start confiscating Trump's uh, properties, and the bond is going to be revoked. That's what I was going to yeah, ask. You mean by revoked, put up to the full price again? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I that's what that. I think will happen too. And it should have been. Why Absolutely. are we waiting for that? That should have been as soon as this was received. Because he already couldn't afford it and was like, but wait a minute. You Now, once you had the bond put up, the 175, you said you had the money. Oh, I have the money. But now you don't have it again. I mean, do you have it or you don't have it? And yeah. there's a billionaire who was willing to give him the full amount. And he they did not disclose that. And it's come mm. to light. Yeah. So it's obvious he lied to the yep. judge. And his lawyers lied. And his well, his lawyers lied for him too. And I mean, in the lawyers. in the Trump tradition, they'll end up getting their legs smacked that's legally, right. and he'll get, keep skating. That's right. They're going to get thrown under the bus. A couple mm -hmm. of them will be sanctioned. Uh, one of them will be prosecuted. They'll lose their legal <laughs> license. Trump always does that. He uses people as his patsies so that if something happens, they get the blame and he thinks he skates away free. But I'm telling you, he's, well, he's going to have to pay the 475 plus interest on the criminal case with Stormy Daniels. He's going to be convicted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you guys feel that he's, the lawyers are going to be sanctioned, disbarred or prosecuted? Yeah, yeah something heavy, something yeah. you wouldn't want. Yeah, if you were them. <laughs> How do you feel about Elena Haba? He, she says that, uh, well, I'm not in with the, um, she said that she's not part of the appeal, but she did work to help reduce the bond and help get it reduced. And she was talking all about it on social media. So do you feel she should be held liable as well and that she will? If she oh, lied and they can prove what it. What do you think, Mel? I'm going to pull a few cards. If, if she lied and they can prove it, the answer is yes. I think they'll go easy on her. It's mm -hmm. two other lawyers I see I'm really going after. Yeah, I got she will be sanctioned. She won't be. I don't feel she'll be prosecuted. I feel she'll be sanctioned. Um, the other they two. Maybe her license for like three to six months. However, they'll do it. She might have to pay a fine and be, you know, sanctioned publicly. But I don't see her. I don't see her going to jail, no. Yeah. I got... This is the nth sword for her, you know, <laughs> and a deal will be struck. Um, the thing is, too, I think her nemesis or her Waterloo is the Bedminster case where she befriended the worker. 
um, at the golf course. Remember that woman who was threatened and Alina Haber did all this illegal stuff saying, I'm your friend, trust me. Don't trust the lawyer you've already hired. No, 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 trust me. I think that could be the end of her law career when that case Ooh, played. I got cold chills when you said that, Lena. That means yes. Oh, yeah. goody. Yeah. yeah, this one she'll get away with, but not that one. Okay, so the next question is the Arizona Supreme Court. They ruled in favor of a law from 1864 banning abortion in the state. The law permits doctors to be prosecuted and face two to five years in jail for performing an abortion of any any time unless the mother's life of, is in danger with no exceptions for rape, incest, or even for a minor child. Like we had that one that was a 10-year-old, yeah, 11-year-old child. And uh, so several Republican legislators are calling for the law to be repealed. Do you guys feel it will be repealed is the first question. I think it'll be put on the ballot. It'll be repealed. And that's going to help Arizona go purple totally because when yeah. Democrat or Republican are going to be hopping mad. You yeah. know, I've often said the MAGAs, you know, that Supreme Court in Arizona is a bunch of old white men, you know, mm -hmm. who call themselves Christian. If that's Christian, count me out. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. But I often said they want to take us back 50 to 75 years. I was wrong in Arizona it was wrong. <laughs> years. <laughs> and I love the fact it's attached to a year, exactly. right? It's yeah. sort of really making it obvious. We're not talking about going back to the 50s here. We're talking 1864. Right so after this, right the end of the Civil War. War. Hello. <laughs> what other laws are they going to take us back to back then? It's. I see it going on the ballot in Arizona, and I see. I see it being repealed, yeah. and I don't know what the what the Supreme Court was thinking. But I want to tell you something: when their turn comes up for re-election on the Supreme Court in Arizona, I see Democrats taking over. So it's going to be a whole new Supreme Court. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, the sooner the better. Thank you. I, I read it on it and, and got that it would be repealed. Also, however, I got that it's going to be, um, it's going to have to be voted on as well. Um, what I wanted to know is how you, and this is how I feel, yes, about this. Will this law cause many doctors to flee the state for fear of prosecution and not wanting to be put in the position that if he yeah, doesn't work in this? Yeah, what if he tries to save the mother's life? You know, how soon can he intervene? Does he have to wait 15 minutes before she dies? Yeah, yeah. look, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. It's a dangerous precedent when the government starts trying to practice medicine. Yes. And I think, you know, I do see some doctors that will be prosecuted, but I see their cases turned over on appeal. And that sets a precedent yeah. that this law is BS. Um, mm -hmm. And I see this law repealed. And at some point, across the country, once the Supreme Court makes changes, I see Roe v. Weld, uh, Roe v. Wade upheld again so uh, and codified so that it can't, you know, uh, it'll, so um, I think Arizona was a litmus test and other states will try it, but it's going to slap them in the face or kick them in the butt as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they no, weren't I even a state it. in 1864. Arizona wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I think California was still Mexico, wasn't it? Yeah. Or something or Texas. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's go. And and what I'm worried about is a lot of these doctors, they're good no doctors question. that are going to be OBGYNs, are gonna say the heck with this, and they're gonna leave because they don't want to be put in that position. Yeah. Of they're they kind of because you can't lose nothing. everything. I do I see doctors leaving, yes. Uh, but I see, but I see a lot of doctors, male and female, staying there and fighting. Mm. Good, good. Yeah, I think there'll probably be a class action of some sort. I got that too, because I was going to ask you: Will women, women and girls die as a result of this law, or even commit suicide if they're not if they're forced to carry a baby of rape or incest? And I got that there there will be some lawsuits, and there may be seven, eight people that pass because of this and they're going to be sued. And, unfortunately, and it's unfortunately, there will be loss of life. Mm. And that's sad. 
It is. And I think it'll go back to backroom abortions years ago that these butchers did in, in a back room somewhere and people hemorrhaged to death. They died of infection. Yeah. Um, Couldn't have other children after that. Had, and so, you know. Right. And I'm yes. old enough to remember it. Exactly. In those yeah. days, the code was, because my state was like Texas, um, a woman would have to travel a 1,000 miles um, to get a, even a backyard abortion. That's okay. how it was here. So the code was she's visiting an auntie in Sydney. And I remember the women, you know, no one had any money, working class suburb, just giving a shilling, just giving a bit of money to try and help, you know, June get on the train to Sydney. I remember it. Me yeah. too. I remember it here. Um, the backroom abortions and a lot of women died and it was really yeah. sad. Um, it was barbaric. But and and what they're going to try in some of these states like Arizona, but it won't work, that if a woman is a resident of Arizona and she goes to another state to terminate a pregnancy and when she comes back, they will try her for a murder or for breaking the law. Yeah, this is where it's handmade really yeah. heavy stuff. Right. Yeah. But but you know what? If that goes to the Supreme Court, they'll say no, she's got the right to travel. Um, but the answer is very simple, just leave Arizona and become a resident of another, of another state. But some people can't do that. What well, about no, poor people that, that maybe they're gonna have maybe that was incest and they're gonna have a deformed, severely deformed child that they cannot take care of, and they're maybe 12 years old or kid them. How how is this even and then they're gonna take away everything that would help any poor person like WIC, food stamps, things they're like not, that? They're not pro-life. No. They're they're not pro life. No, no. not pro life. They're mm. pro birth. Okay, yeah. like Alabama, that you know, if you have frozen embryos, they're children. Oh, well, then do the parents have to pay child support? <laughs> and they're not pro life because they all support the death penalty. Correct. They're not pro life. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you can't just pick and choose the good bits. You can't. And then what if that kid is born with special needs, God forbid, like Deanne said, then they're not going to want to take care of that child because the very programs that would help to take care of a child with special needs, the MAGAs want to cut the spending on that. Yes, so yes. So you have a kid, we force you to take care of it, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's yeah. true. <laughs> and and I can speak from my own family. I have a niece with a nonverbal uh, um, autistic child who's getting bigger and she cannot hardly handle him. And, and they won't help her. She cannot get help to help him speak. She don't know what to do. She's trying to deal with two kids. She's young. But she don't have money. So they, they won't yeah. help her. She can't get a job because she can't leave the house. If they can't yes. her have babies, she definitely can't get a job. Is she in Illinois? She is. If she's a full-time caregiver, she can apply through the state to be a caregiver. And I think they pay you like $13 or $14 an hour, which is nothing. I have to tell her that. I don't think she knows that. Yeah, tell her to check Thank into you. it. Thank you. I used to be a social worker. Mm. Oh, my daughter's a social worker, too. Did yeah. you know? <laughs> she might know that, too. Um, Trump knows, by uh, speaking of this, Trump knows, uh, remember he said he was going to go state by state. First he was for the abortion, he, he was for Roe v. Wade, then he thought it wasn't so popular, then he said, well, let's just go by the state. Uh, and this state by state comment, uh, will it upset his staunch anti-abortion followers? So he, he, he knew it would upset them. So he said, we have to do what we have to do in order to win. I think he meant he will make it a federal crime if he's elected, but he has to say what he must to get elected. So do his support, his supporters know this, this and are still going to vote for him? Or will this cause him to lose even his MAGA women? Most, yeah, of, this his is most of his supporters are drunk on the Kool-Aid. Mm. I do think it'll switch some independent voters to, to vote Democratic. And, and some of his followers. But, you know, Hitler's followers followed him until Hitler died. Then after the fact, they crawl back in the woodwork. Hmm. And that's exactly how it's going to be with Trump. Once he's gone, oh, it'll be a different story. Yeah, I wasn't there. wasn't me. Yeah. Exactly. The yeah. hypocrisy of it, though. Hmm. I heard him last week, and I, I can't imitate him. I wish I could. But <laughs> hmm. he's like, um, I overturned Roe v. Wade. 
No, he didn't. Your Supreme Court you put in did. Then he says he overturned it. Hurrah for me. But then, well, I'm going to do it state by state. Three days later. I mean, yeah. this is double speak. It's total double speak. <laughs> It and almost I, makes me think the Handmaid's Tale was something that they were planning. You know, it just seems so. The oh, these issues have always been Handmaid's Tale in the sense when any state or social environment is hardcore on abortion, it's code, it's then very hard to get contraception even. Right. So, again, I'm old enough to remember you couldn't get contraception unless you were married. Yes. And so you're in a small town. The doctor knows everyone. So you couldn't get contraception if you're unmarried because obviously you were a slut. You know. mm -hmm. Just keep your legs closed. But the men, it's okay. The boys will be boys. Not a problem. So... It's really scary. It's going back to the worst of the 50s and 60s, you know. Well, in Kentucky, where I grew up, you know, women could get birth control pills back when they first came out. I think it was called Orthonovum or something, the brand name. Mm -hmm. um, the Catholic Church didn't like birth control. Then, then that whole debate raged then, you know. But um, but now, so nobody's sending the word, word in the 60s and late 50s about women taking birth control pills except for the church. But now in some of these states are even trying to ban birth control pills. Yes, like, absolutely. And the other thing, speaking of the Catholic Church, um, was the rule was if you had five children already, <laughs> you could have a hysterectomy. If you had less than five, no matter what was going on, you had mm -hmm. to keep having babies. Five was the bottom line. And so all these women, thousands of women, you know, have five kids in a hysterectomy. That was the only choice they had to not have more kids. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Right? And a couple of years ago when this stuff first started churning in the States, I was reading a story. There was a big rise in women having their tubes tied, having this done. So women have to force into having other interventions in their bodies because they haven't got health care anymore and they're living under the ayatollahs a lot of catholic women back in those days said screw you to the church and went ahead and got their tubes tied or whatever they had to do you know it wasn't easy to get though no it was not easy it was difficult it was very mm. difficult you know it's like my my thing about the church, and I'm I'm Catholic, not a very good one. I don't go along with all the dogmatic yes. But, but it has great rituals. <laughs> the rituals, I I mean, I love the mass at Christmas. It's it's incredible. But I remember uh, on Fridays uh, you had to eat fish. Yes. It was before Vatican II, if you ate meat on Friday, it was a venial sin. That's a minor sin, but if they all add up. God, mm -hmm. that's right. Because Jesus is up there just keeping track of your sins. You know, he's got that little sin board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then after Vatican II, people could eat meat on Fridays. So I wonder what happened to all those people who died and went to hell or <laughs> because they ate meat on Fridays before Vatican II. Did they get a ticket to get out of hell or a ticket to get out of hell? Yeah, that's right. What happened to them? Yeah, and the local hospital in our neighborhood used to call it fishbone night <laughs> Friday night because everyone was eating fish. So you'd end up with a couple of kids and two old people who were choking on a fishbone. Yeah, <laughs> my husband remembers that now. He's a couple years older than you, and he was born and raised Catholic and went to Catholic school, and he remembers that. You know, the fish, yeah. no no meat on Friday. Yeah. Um, I had this question. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene on Tuesday renewed her threat to oust Speaker Mike Johnson, writing a blistering letter that condemned his leadership as she tries to uh, gain support among her Republican colleagues for his potential removal. They were uh, supposed to uh, for his potential removal. They were supposed to co connect. Uh, it was last week, but it didn't happen. So Marjorie Trader Green blamed him for jeopardizing the Republicans House majority by not doing more to prevent some from retiring, retiring GOP members from leaving that he should have prevented that. So uh, Congress early. So anyway, she said that she 
uh, will not tolerate more aid being given to Ukraine. Uh, Green has not said how much support she has, but with only a one vote advantage, uh, there's no margin for error. So will she uh, force a vote or is this just political theater? Well, it's political theater. Anything Marjorie Taylor Green does. Yes. She likes Putin. I think she should go over there and live with him and see how she likes yeah, him. Yeah, off you go, Pip. Um, but, you know, I think if, if she tries to oust him, even though a lot of the Dems don't like him, mm -hmm. I think they'll vote to keep him in. The only reason she's angry it's, 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 uh, is because he brought everybody to the House floor to pass a budget because he didn't. he knew the, the, the ramifications if we didn't pass a budget. Federal yeah. workers wouldn't get paid, parks closed, blah, blah, blah. She's a bully. And yeah. let her try. Mean girl. Her wings will be clipped, period. Yeah. That's what my guides say. Um, yeah, the thing with her, too, the reason people, have you ever seen this? Resigning in an election year, one after the other, knowing her. That's how bad it is. Yes. And they're running away from Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is the irony. She's blaming him for not keeping them in there going, I can't spend another day in that woman's company. Her you know? and Bober and Gates say they're yeah. tired of it. They want yeah. to out. They don't want yeah. to wait. And then, yeah, and then she blames it's him. Gates and Jordan. But, you know, she's well, symbolically the worst well, of the worst. They'll get her yeah. out. But, you know, Bobert's going to be gone too, like Miss Baby's Bible's Jesus and, uh, <laughs> and get Baby's Bible, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. If, if she does, if she does, if she decides um, to, to take up a vote, well, how, do you guys feel Hakeem Jeffries will be elected in because enough conservatives are tired of doing Trump's bidding and the appearance of another clown show in Congress? And there, I get that. I think that she might take it up. And I feel like Hakeem may be uh, put in before um, the election, you know, before the election. I hope maybe, you know, but I'm feeling like it might happen. But um, they don't. They don't have enough of a majority. If just one or two people <laughs> decide to go against her, if if Marjorie Taylor Greene tries to get rid of them, um, but she's also going to need some Democratic votes as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Dems might not vote to get rid of them because the next person they put up there could be, you know, BS crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and at least he. I don't like. I don't like the speaker. You know, the preacher man. But he at least did, you know, call them together to get a budget passed because a lot of the Republicans didn't want us to default. They they mm -hmm. knew we needed a budget. So the Dems might want to keep them in until after the election. Mm -hmm. um, she'll try to get rid of them, yes. But I think everybody and uh, many, many people in, in the House, Republicans, not MAGAs, but some MAGAs are getting tired of her shenanigans. and. Yeah. And she's going to be shunned like like white on rice at some point. Totally, <laughs> that's what do I. Do you see. think it depends on what Trump tells her to do? Because I think yes, she does the, whatever it, Trump tells her. If he says, "I want you to take up a vote," I think she would. She's a female version of Donald Trump. She's yeah. doing exactly what he's telling her to do. Mike Johnson, it's your fault. I'm getting mm. rid of you. Because yes. you didn't do what I wanted you to do to hell with your constituents, to hell with American people. So it's your fault because you did this to yourself. Wrong answer, Marjorie. <laughs> yes. And also, I don't think she's so much taking orders from Trump. I don't think he remembers she's in the world, frankly, you know. <laughs> Um, but she models herself, which is what you were saying. She models herself mm -hmm. on him and mm -hmm. what she thinks he would like her to say. But I don't think there's any connection between those two. No, he's not saying her Marjorie tomorrow at 2.30. I want you to no. do this. But I think you hit it, Lena. She emulates his behavior. Yeah. <laughs> because she's a sociopath just like he is. Yeah, Absolutely. I guess Trump's moving to sue Judge Juan Merchant, the New York judge, uh, presiding over his hush money trial. The trial is set to begin Monday, April 15th, and the suit will be challenged the gag order that was placed, he was placed under. He plans to file an appeal on Monday. His lawyers claim that they cannot pick a fair jury due to the pre-trial publicity. Well, who's doing all the pre-trial publicity, you know? <laughs> look, don't look for the logic. I mean, that is about as illogical as a submarine with screen doors, you know? Yeah. Okay. 
I laugh when I heard that he's going to file that lawsuit against the judge. How do you say Mershon or Mer how do you pronounce his name? Mershon, I think. Okay. Mershon. I like Mershon. Mershon, whatever. Uh, that's going to go through the court really quick. It's going to be denied. They'll try another little legal tactic. Not going to happen. They're not going to win. I see that trial taking place. It might be delayed by a day or two, but I'm telling you, it's going to happen mid-April. You mark my words. Okay. And you don't think that they'll move the trial from uh, Manhattan, you know, saying that they're overly biased. I don't think no, so. No, because what will happen is that judge is already issuing jury instructions. Mm. Uh, you know, here's what we're going to say to the jury. So the judge will poll the jurors and say, okay, and ask them questions. Uh, and so, I mean, anywhere that Trump would take it in the country, they could argue that it's biased. So therefore, we should dismiss the case. That's what they're coming to. Exactly. If, and he's a national figure. So that's the end of that argument. You know, well, let's yeah. take him to Australia and let him try there. <laughs> no, we rejected him. Do you guys know that story? Our federal police in the 90s, Trump tried to get a casino license in Australia. And this is at the high-flying, you know, era of Trump everything, including Atlantic City. Our federal police took two days or something to say, are you mad? This guy is mobbed up to the back teeth. He doesn't pay his subcontractors, right? He has a really bad business record. He'd already been bankrupt twice. He's not of good character was their decision. Wow. They would not let him do business in Australia. Will you take Rupert Murdoch back? No, he's all yours now. <laughs> <laughs> he did so much damage here and in the UK. Evil oh, man. the damage he did here. I mean, everywhere. Massive. Massive. But he he's did the same in the UK. He He's a kingmaker, whether you like him or hate him. He brought Thatcher in. He killed the working class. He killed the miners. That's what he did here. Yeah. Oh, no, it's the same playbook. Same thing. Well, I'll do this one. I'll try to say this. It's a long one. I'll say it really fast, Lena, because I know you got to go, but I want yeah, to know okay. you think about this. Uh, okay, this is some evidence that uh, RFK Jr. is working for Trump. The latest evidence comes from Rita Palmer, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s uh, state director in New York. A few days ago, Palmer told New York Republicans that putting Kennedy on the ballot, there will it will help them get rid of Biden, which she says is her number one priority, and it'll make it easier for Trump to win the historically Democratic state. In a video of her meeting with New York Republicans, she said the only way that Trump can even have a remote possibility of taking New York is if Bobby's on the ballot. If it's Trump versus Biden, Biden wins. Biden wins six, seven days a week. With Bobby on there, uh, the mix, anything can happen. The only way for Bobby to shake it up and get rid of Biden is if he is on the ballot in every state, including New York. She listed a list of actions to block Biden from winning the presidency. Among them, collect signatures for RFK Jr., go to Pennsylvania and help Trump and vote for RFK for president. So is this going to work or take votes away from Biden or is it going to backfire on them? This worries me a lot. What do you think, Mel? Well, it does worry me. Uh, I don't know if he's working directly for Trump, uh, but I think he knows or he thinks that's the outcome, that if he take, gets votes, then, you know, if Biden is leading Trump, but then he gets votes, then it takes votes away from Biden and Trump. But it could go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. Independents, all right, might decide that, you know, rather than voting for Trump or people for Trump, they might vote for RFK. So it could go either way. But I got to, it's very, very dangerous. And it does it's scare me. So dangerous. It's very dangerous. But I still feel it's going to blow up in their face. I really yeah, do. Yeah, I, I don't think he'll be there at the end. But look, Biden only needs to lose 5% of the vote and he's in trouble. You know. yeah. Um, yeah. So it's very selfish, very egotistical, very destructive. I don't know. think RFK has 5% of the vote. I don't think he has that much. 
I think who, New Yorkers hate Trump enough that they know what they're pulling. I think they're smart enough to know what they're pulling. I don't think, I think it's going to backfire. I New think Yorkers, that, New York I hope so, but elections are decided by independent voters and there's a lot of people who think they're both too old or they're sick of it. It's the same election as last time. I'm sick of their names, sick of their faces. The disenchanted vote he could pick up and that's what's dangerous. You know? Yes. Yeah, but, so, but most yeah. New Yorkers do not like RFK. Most people don't like him. The anti-vaxxers might, but that's about it. But that's not 5%, I don't think. And a lot of Republicans are supporting RFK. So for that very reason. And the thing is, is some of them may take, go instead of they're sick of Trump, the ones that are sick of Trump may vote for him. So I don't know. I don't know. But that's just to stop the show. I know we have to go, but I wanted to stop on that to say Please don't vote for RFK. If you if even if you think yeah. you don't like Biden, don't take a chance because you are giving you, it is a chance that you're helping Trump. And we cannot have him. We Dan, cannot. you said you said one thing I just want to touch on, then we'll go. You mm -hmm. said a lot of people that would vote for Trump will vote for RFK. So that takes votes away from Trump. Right. That's why yeah, I think but it's too matter. risky. It's, it's very it's risky. Too, very the numbers risky. are just too tight I, I, to I, have I, this experiment. And his own family have said, because they're a yes. dynastic family, they understand politics, you know, and they're going, why are you doing it now? Right. Do not do this. This is too dangerous for the country in this time. If he wants to hang around and go again in 2028 and fall over then, Fine. Not this year. His so I can't understand what's enough. motivating him to do this. He's, you know, he should know right. how dangerous yeah. this is. His father's turning over in his grave. I, I do at some point, but his father's spirit just came through and said he uh, he will not win at this. So good. Okay. Well, I won't keep, I know that that was a lot. I, I tried, wanted to get through as much as we could. That we got fun. through a ton. And Go, I, have more. Yeah. I, have, um, I have writer's cramp. I'm surprised my hand isn't like did a great job. I, I guess you did a wonderful job, both of you. I see a Kennedy becoming president again, just not RFK. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Is it going to be yeah. a really good leader, a Democrat, who will finish a two term presidency? Uh, and we'll, you know, we'll be a phenomenal president. So all of this is to say vote, 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 vote. Don't get distracted. Don't get sidetracked by any of this. Just vote blue. And my mantra is help one other person to register and vote. And that yes. doubles your vote. Yes, it's true. Them a ride. If they need a ride, whatever they need. If they you need know, a ride, if they're on the fence, they haven't voted for years, uh, you know, all of that stuff, take them by the hand. <laughs> Make sure that their paperwork's up to date. That's well, right. Thank you guys so much for coming on here. That was so fun. I want to do this again. I love reading. I just love talking this stuff with you guys. And yeah, it was fun. I love it. It's good. Let's do it again. Yeah, yeah we'll totally do it again. If you are not subscribed to Lena or Mel, I've got their, their names in the description box. I've also got their links in the chat box, even though it was not, you know, it wasn't live. I have it in there. Please subscribe to them. They are amazing. And if you need to learn tarot, down below me here, that is the best teacher in the whole wide world and one of the <laughs> nicest people in the whole wide world. So, and now you're great. So I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to have you on my channel, both of you. Thank you. And you're a great host. Thank you so much, Deanne. You're All excellent. Right. Thank you, guys. All right. I'll talk to you later. Mel, hang on for one second when I yeah. just log off. Bye-bye, Lena.